Hi everyone, I've got another miniature here for you now with Leonid Yurtayev against Yuri Shulman, which was played in Vladivostok in Russia in 1995. Yurtayev is a strong GM from Kyrgyzstan, and Shulman is a GM too, originally from Belarus, but now living in the US. So, to get into the game anyway, it was a King's Indian defense with d4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7, e4, d6, knight f3, black castle, bishop e2, e5, and d5, which is the Petrosian variation of the King's Indian. And the main line there continues to a5, but the idea is about bringing the knight to a6, so h3, and knight a6, and then g4 from Yurtiev, which is unusual. Um, he's going to castle queenside, but he's planning to, so he's just getting his pawn storm going early. The main line here usually is bishop g5, just uh, pinning this knight. So g4 was played anyway. And then knight c5, adding pressure to this pawn, so queen c2 protects it. And c6, bishop e3, and a4, which was a new move at the time. Previously, c takes d5 have been played at top level. And a4 just increases the pressure with the the pawns coming down here on what will be white's king side after he castles the queen side. Um, and it was a strong continuation. Here white castled. He could have uh, won a pawn with d, d takes c6 and after b takes c6 castling and threatening to win this knight because if the pawn recaptures now then the rook will take the queen. So queen c7 has to be played to stop that. And then after bishop takes c5, d takes c5, g5, knight h5, and knight takes a4, wins a pawn. But after knight f4, black would have good compensation um, with the knight at a strong outpost on f4. It can't be dislodged from there very easily. And also the bishop pair. So it would be pretty equal probably. Um, but White didn't go for that anyway, he castled. And then Shulman played c takes d5, and after c takes d5, queen a5. Knight d2, and bishop d7. And black is starting to get pretty strong initiative here with threats like b5 and then b4. And uh, the open files here will prove pretty dangerous against the king. So white has to react quickly. They played g5, which is questionable, really. A better continuation would have been knight c4, getting a tempo on the queen. So after the queen moves, c7 would probably be the best square. Then playing g5 is okay, because after knight to h5, bishop takes h5, g takes h5. And here it's a very sharp and double-edged position. And uh, it's preferable than the game continuation, at least, as far as Yurtaev is concerned. Because after g5, Shulman came up with a brilliant move. And if you want to try and spot it, then stop the video now. What he played was knight f takes e4, which is an unexpected and well calculated sacrifice. It's got a few ideas in mind, notably unleashing the g7 bishop, which is going to be a violent attacking weapon on the white king down here. And uh, the resulting attack after the sacrifice decides the game pretty quickly, as you'll see. So Yurtiev accepted the, the sack with knight d takes e4, and it's really best to accept it. If he declines it with something like, say, knight c4, attacking the queen, then uh, knight takes c3, leaving the queen on pre, is probably the best continuation for black. So after knight takes a5, then knight takes a2 check, King d2 and rook takes a5. And black has very good compensation for the queen with two knights, two extra pawns, and a much better position. You know, he's going to have good attacking chances. The bishop can come to f5, attacking the queen. The knight can come to b3 with check, and it's at a good outpost. And it's, uh, it's better for black in this continuation. So it's not good to decline it. And it's also best to take it when knight d takes e4. If he plays knight c takes e4, then it favours black. After knight takes e4, knight c4 attacking the queen. And queen d8 is the best move for black. Even after queen takes e4, there's bishop f5 attacking the queen. So queen h4 and b5 is strong. 
knight b6, then rook c8 check is uh, very strong for black. King d2 is the best move. If knight takes c8, then queen c7 is very strong. With uh, all kinds of threats on the king. So uh, the, in it, the immediate mate threat has to be dealt with, with the mate coming on c2 if nothing is done about it. So bishop c4 and then rook takes c8 is very strong for black because this bishop is going to fall and the attack will just be raging. So um, after rook c8 check, king d2 is the best continuation, but even then there's rook b8 and say bishop g4 then rook takes b6 bishop takes f5 g takes f5 bishop takes b6 queen takes b6 and black has excellent compensation for his material deficit he's got a pawn after having lost the exchange and his pawn center is strong uh, this pawn of whites is isolated and the attack should be able to continue fairly easily for black so it's best to recapture with knight d takes e4 and that's what was played in the game so then came knight takes e4 and queen takes e4 if instead knight takes e4 and rook fc8 is very strong for black I have to say for example knight c3 just protecting the queen because it can't move because it's pinned to the king and then a3 is winning for black because th there's going to be more attackers and defenders on this knight. If the pawn moves forward, or if it just takes the other pawn, then rook takes c3. It's winning. And if black defends with the bishop, then the pawn push adds another attacker. And also check, and this defender will be gone. So it's easily winning for black. So queen takes e4 is the right move. Then came bishop to f5, attacking the queen. So queen h4 which is really the best move. If queen c4, then again rook f c8 is very strong. Say for example queen b5 and it's mate in two. After rook takes c3, check. If king d2, then rook c2 is mate. And if b takes c3, then queen takes c3 is mate. So queen h4 is the best square for the queen. And then came rook f c8 and King d2 has to be played just to break the pin on the knight and stop those threats. So for example if bishop d2 then a3 again is crushing with the same ideas in mind as before. So king d2 and then black sacrificed the exchange which is very strong and it's basically lost now for white. He played b takes c3 and after queen takes d5 check. Bishop to d3 is horrible move to have to play but it's basically forced. Um, if instead king c1 then queen takes a2 with ma mating threats. So say bishop d3 and then bishop takes d3, rook takes d3, queen a1 check, picks up the rook. And if after queen takes d5 check, king e1 then queen takes h1, loses the rook immediately. So, bishop d3 has to be played. And then came bishop takes d3 with massive threats on the king here. Queen b4. Again, if king c1, then queen takes a2 is winning. So, queen b4. And then bishop to f1. Check. Discovered check from the queen. And also interrupting the lines of communication between the rooks. So after king c1, queen takes h1, can be played. And now it's really looking bad for white. He played uh, queen takes d6, but after queen takes h3, he'd had enough and resigned because his position is completely lost. On top of being a bishop and two pawns down, all of his pawns are isolated, and black still has strong initiative. So it's all over, and a brilliant game from Shulman. I'll uh, replay it with the threatened squares highlighted just so you can see it again from start to finish. A very imaginative and creative sacrifice, as you saw, just led to an absolutely winning position in every variation.
Very daring, great play. Yeah, there it is. And then it was more or less forced after the sack. And black one in style. So, a great game. I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave any comments or thoughts. Thanks very much.